So the, uh, yeah, the topic is basically electrothermal analysis of FETs and M uh, mimics. And uh, yeah, my name is Ted Morocco. I'm from AWR Corporation. And with me is uh, John Fiala from Cape Sim. So this is a, a, a joint paper. Uh, Cape Sim is uh, the name of, the, of, a, of a company here in, uh, uh, up in uh, Natick, uh, Massachusetts. And the simulation product is called Simic. Okay, so SIMIC is a, uh, again, we're getting back to finite element analysis. It's a finite element uh, simulator for doing thermal analysis. So with it, um, we can go ahead and we can take an MMIC and mesh the, the entire structure, the metal and the, uh, the uh, various layers in, in the uh, MMIC. And the, the mission of, of, uh, of the SIMIC product is really to accurately calculate the uh, maximum junction temperatures in the FETs. Um, with it, we capture all of the relevant geometry and uh, take into account all of the, the, uh, the physics. And again, we won't get into the details of that today, but we'll uh, uh, kind of go through some practical examples. Okay, so I guess the, the, the first most basic question is why do we even want to do um, electrothermal analysis? And since we have an audience of people, I think people <laughs> are interested in the topic. So. Uh, junction temperature is definitely a metric for failure in uh, gallium arsenide devices, so that's uh, one reason. Uh, the other reason is, is performance. You know, power added efficiency is, is adversely affected by, by temperature. So if we, can, if we can design the FETs and design the circuits so that we reduce the, the junction temperatures, we can possibly improve the uh, power added efficiency substantially. And that's going to have a big impact on things like uh, battery life. So when your cell phone goes, goes dead, you're dealing with the thermal effects inside the, uh, the devices. So, and I guess the, the, the last one is really reliability. Um, obviously, the higher the junction temperatures, the, 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 the higher the probability of failure of the devices. OK, so, so what's new? Um, the, the, the Cape Sim uh, product, Simic, has been available for a, for a number of years, but it's been a standalone uh, product, meaning the thermal analysis could be done in isolation, and then uh, the circuit analysis would typically be done in, in, in products from AWR uh, using harmonic balance or transient type simulations, um, and those two things were separate. Um, we, of course, we have some nice device models with thermal ports, but a lot of times the engineers are, are guessing at what, what to uh, put into the thermal port and what the actual temperatures are going to be. Um, so l last year, uh, we started talking to Cape Sim, and we, we had a number of customers that were really driving us to uh, provide a, a thermal analysis capability. So what we did was, in, in a very short period of time, we were able to take the thermal analysis engine and connect it to the harmonic balance simulator so that we can do the electrical analysis, um, we can figure out what the currents are, then we can feed those currents into the thermal engine and then run the, the thermal analysis and figure out what the temperatures are going to be in the devices. And then what, what we, from a practical perspective, what you really need to do is you need to iterate on that because you start out with an initial guess on what the junction temperatures are going to be, then you find out what, what it's really going to be and then you have to feed that back. So. Um, we were able to connect the two things together and uh, in very short order uh, put together a working prototype after the uh, IMS show last year. So um, the, w the way it works is really qu quite, quite, quite seamless to the user. Um, uh, the, we, we, we take advantage of the uh, component object model and we, we interconnect the two products. Um, I won't go into the details of how it works, but basically in, in microwave office you will, you will uh, uh, already have a layout and a geometry, and that geometry is passed directly to the Cape Sim product. So you're, you're not re-entering the geometry. If you change the gate lengths, if you change the, the spacing between the, the, the FETs and you re-simulate, that geometry is automatically passed from microwave office to Cape Sim. So it's, it's very dynamic. It, it doesn't require re-entry. Um, and uh, as you do it, it'll, it'll regenerate a power table and, and run the analysis. So, so here, here's the, uh, the, the, the simulation in action. Um, 
over here on the right, we, we have the layout in microwave office of a couple FETs. We've just zoomed in on a, on a piece of a uh, distributed amplifier. And then on, on the left, you can see the thermal analysis. So you can see the, the thermal gradient, um, red is hot and yellow is medium and blue is cool. So you can see the concentration of the, of the heat right along the fingers of the FETs. Okay. And if you look at it really closely, you'll see that, that the, um, it's a six finger, those are both uh, six finger FETs. You can see that the, the, the central uh, fingers, three and four, are the ones that are getting the, hot, the uh, hottest. So you can use this approach for, um, for at, at really multiple levels of, of simulation. You can use it to change the actual physical layout of the devices. You can use it from a circuit analysis perspective. And you can, you can use it also as, at, a, at a system level or a module level. So, and we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail as well. So, um, let, let, let's just back up a second. Um, if, if we look at the initial thermal analysis here, you'll, you will see that the, the peak uh, junction temperatures uh, is six, uh, 68 degrees C. So not quite hot enough to cook an egg, but you're getting up there. And uh, this is just the initial run. And then, as I said, we're going to do, we're going to iterate. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to then take that, those junction temperatures, um, feed it into the harmonic balance simulator, set the thermal uh, port to that temperature, and then rerun the analysis. And if we run the analysis, um, here what we've done is we've actually done eight iterations. Uh, let me see if I can even read it. What's it say, John? I can't even see. Yeah. Okay. So after eight iterations, we see that it's actually gone up to 84 degrees C. So that's a pretty significant difference between the initial guess and, and, and the final analysis. 84 degrees C is going gonna, is gonna to be a lot worse from a, from a power added efficiency perspective. It's going to be a lot worse from a reliability perspective than the initial guess. So this stuff does matter, and it really does affect things. Um, other analysis that we've done, we've looked at multi-stage, you know, three-stage amplifiers, and the junction temperatures can vary by as much as 20 degrees C between different stages because the scaling isn't necessarily right between the different uh, devices. So, um, so another thing we can do do with the with the Simic tool is we can run a lot. Of, we can we can analyze a lot of the trade offs. So, in terms of designing the devices and picking the right devices for the application, you can go ahead and you can create tables that basically shows the temperature rise versus the gate to gate spacing. Um, here we have. Th three different configurations of the devices, and, and you can uh, look at these curves and again try to try to pick the right device for the application that you're using. You don't you, you want you want the exact right size devices. You want the right uh, uh, gate lengths um, for it, and you want the right spacing so that you can minimize the junction temperatures and maximize your your efficiency. Okay, so um, what does it take to really get good um, peak junction temperature predictions? Um, one of the things that, that actually John Dunn was talking about earlier with the spiral inductor modeling is you really need to mesh these things. And again, this is a thermal analysis, not an electro, electrical analysis, but it's the same concept. You're doing a finite element analysis, and you really need to mesh the geometry um, very, in, a, in a very fine manner to get accurate predictions of the junction temperatures. So you need a, a, a ver very good, accurate uh, representation of the geometry, including even the very thin layers uh, that go into the the fabrication of the device. Um, you need realistic power distribution um, in the channel, so duty cycles and things like that are relevant. Um, if you're dealing with modulated signals, you need to figure out ways to ac accurately model the uh, duty cycle going in. And then you need accurate boundary conditions. So a uh, common question we always get is, is what about you know, um, uh, heat sinks and, and, and cooling plates and things like that? And uh, the answer is, yeah, we can, we can take into account a lot of different um, boundary conditions, and those can all be factored into the simulation. OK, here's a cross-sectional uh, look at, at, uh, at the uh, um, uh, profile for, for a device. Uh, there's a number of very thin layers. Um, but basically, uh, in CapeSim, you create templates. And the templates basically allow you to, to set up all of the material characteristics for different, different processing layers. And it's very easy with these templates to modify the configuration and experiment with different things to try to reduce the, the uh, junction temperatures. Um, 
so in, in terms of uh, setting up the problem th through, the, through the GUI, it's, it's, it's a very easy way of accessing the material database, accessing the, the thicknesses of the, the various layers, and de defining the, uh, the, the cross-sectional uh, cutout for the various uh, devices. As I said er earlier, uh, the techniques that I'm talking about are relevant at multiple le uh, levels of, of design. So uh, people who are involved really in, in designing transistors themselves, uh, de defining the, de the devices, can use these techniques and they can try to um, create devices that are going to uh, be most efficient at distributing the, uh, the heat that's generated. Uh, it's also very relevant for circuit designers. So again, the guy who's working on a, on a two-stage or three-stage power amplifier will be very interested in using the, these techniques because it'll allow for proper scaling of the different transistors to control the uh, thermal effects. And then um, at the module level, if you're dealing with, um, you know, if you're dealing with high power applications that are using uh, multiple ICs that are all being put together into a module, uh, the same techniques exist. So if you're, if you're creating you know, some of our, our, our GAN-type modules, uh, for military applications where you're dealing with m multiple um, um, ICs, possibly even using different, different um, processing t uh, technologies. You could use it at the, at the module level as well. Okay, so the, the, the process is fairly straightforward. If we go back, back, back a step. Um, you start out with the basic device design, th then you, you move to the circuit level, you do your actual MMIC layout, um, and then if it, it, if it is going into a TR module, you would go ahead and you would space out your, your ICs in the module. Okay, and then um, you go through the, whoops. Okay, there we go. Uh, then, then at the module level, you can go ahead and you can run the thermal analysis for the whole structure. And what we're showing here is, we're, we're, we're actually showing this is a, a, a multi-stage uh, simulation. You can look at the, the thermal profiles in 3D so you can easily see where the peak temperatures are occurring um, and, and control for that. So, Okay, now here we go to the LRU level and we've basically taken four, four of those modules and, and, and put them all in parallel. So it is a completely hierarchical approach to doing thermal analysis. Um, some of the things that you can do in, in terms of the analysis is you can look at the influence of passivation. You can, you can, you can experiment with different passivation layers. Um, in this case, we're reducing the max temperature by effective use of passivation from uh, 161 degrees C to 144 by um, you know, in, inserting a passivation layer. Uh, you can look at the influence of, of the uh, epi layers in the analysis. So thin, thin, thin epi layers can actually resu uh, reduce the uh, temperature significantly. And uh, you know, the advantage for the uh, RF uh, designer, and when I say RF designer, I mean the circuit designer, is that um, with this integration, now the circuit designer actually has access to the thermal analysis capabilities. So typically, in most companies that we deal with, the thermal analysis is done by one guy who's an expert. And the circuit designer has to go consult with the expert and there's, you know, there's, there's a back and forth. But with this integration, you don't have to be an expert. You still, need, you still need the thermal expert to assist in defining everything and just decide, uh, defining all of the, 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 the details of, of how the analysis is done. But what we're doing is we're pr providing a very powerful uh, thermal analysis capability to the design engineer for the first time. So it really allows a, a very efficient uh, des design space. It's easy to set this up and, and, and to run it. And it does allow the circuit designers to really get, a, uh, for the first time, to get direct uh, feedback as to how their, their, their circuit's going to perform from a thermal perspective, not just from an electrical perspective. So um, there is a lot, lot of uh, additional information in, in, in a 10, 15 minute talk, it's impossible to really cover this in, in any kind of great detail. But I do want to point out to everybody that the, uh, the CIMIC booth is located uh, just down the hall right here. Um, we, we do have live uh, demonstrations running. The AWR booth is back this way and we're, we're, we're showing some of the, 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 the similar uh, demonstrations and the uh, integration in its entirety. So if you have an interest in this, I know it is a hot topic, I'd like to, to encourage you to come talk to the experts. 
Um, I won't spend, how are, how are we doing on time? I think I'm probably, I got two minutes, okay. So uh, some of the things that you can learn through this process is that, you know, some people think substrate vias can be, uh, you know, effective from a thermal perspective. The analysis, the, you know, that John and, and, and others have done have shown that it's really not all that effective. There are other techniques that are more effective, such as the thin epi layers, which we discussed, the uh, passivation layers. And um, uh, lastly, one of the other things that, we, that, that we're really kind of diving into is that uh, the steady state analysis is not necessarily um, uh, going to be accurate. You know, we, we, when, we're, when we're looking at 3G and 4G type systems, um, it's very important to look at the actual modulated signals. So that's something we're not actually demonstrating today, but we will be demonstrating in the not too distant future, is, is taking the system simulator, um, putting in complex modulated signals, and then looking at the, the, the effect it has on the uh, thermal analysis, and not just doing the steady state, which is really where we're at today. Um, so, uh, anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, encourage you to do more, more investigation. Uh, we, 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 are, we are doing some, some interesting things to speed things up because, uh, as John pointed out with the electrical analysis, finite element analysis can take hours, it can take many hours, and we've done some, some novel things with uh, thermal resistance uh, networks, which we're showing as well to give you really instantaneous gratification in terms of running these analysis. Um, it's applicable for a lot of different device technologies, including LDMOS, um, by CMOS, as well as uh, gallium arsenide. And uh, that's, that, that's really all I have time, time for today. Uh, I want to thank everybody very much for coming and encourage you to visit, visit our booths for uh, more information. So thank you.